I'm David, or David, and I'm going to talk about uh, what we have been doing uh, and what this uh, transpiler service is. Um, last year, we introduced this transpiler service, uh, a very early version of this. Um, this uh, allows you to run your transpilation on the cloud. So it's basically uh, all the things that Matthew described can be run as a service, and this was uh, very useful uh, for, for example, building cloud applications where you just want to call a service and you don't care about uh, where this runs. Uh, but we also introduced uh, a really interesting feature here uh, that is the AI-based passes. Um, so today I'm going to talk about what this is um, and also to give a few updates uh, on what we are bringing uh, this time. Uh, this, is, uh, this service is available to all the IBM Premium users, um, but also if you are here in this uh, conference, you can have access as well uh, for these days. Um, so be sure to try it uh, this afternoon in the challenge. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about these AI passes. Um, so you may be wondering why are we doing this? Uh, you know there is a big hype around AI, but that's not the only reason. Um, we actually found that uh, this, uh, by applying AI to, to certain optimization problems we find in transpiling, uh, we can actually get uh, a good balance between optimization and um, runtime. So we will show you which passes we were able to uh, achieve uh, with this method. Uh, so here uh, we are using a, a method called reinforcement learning. Uh, you can, if you are into AI, you can take a look at, um, at how this works. We, we have a paper, you can read it more in detail, but uh, I'm going to do a pretty uh, quick overview on how this works. Um, so, okay, so we, we basically were able to apply this method to two passes, uh, or two kinds of passes. Uh, one of them is the routing pass. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, the same as what Matthew explained. We are basically taking a circuit. Uh, well, the circuit you can see there, this is a pretty small example. Um, and then uh, insert swaps to make it compatible with a coupling map. So this is uh, a hard problem, as, as Matthew said, uh, in particular because it's also uh, entangled with the layout problem. Uh, so what we did was to train a, a, you can say we train a neural network to, or a heuristic, um, to know where to insert swaps uh, at each position in order to kind of minimize uh, the number of swaps. Uh, so the, the way it works is pretty similar to the saber swap. Just instead of, um, of designing the heuristic, this heuristic is learned by reinforcement learning uh, where we optimize uh, this number of swaps we insert. Uh, so we saw that this was able to give pretty good results. You can see one of the results we have here. Um, this is on one of the, uh, like, pretty good cases, so it's not the average case, uh, but we will see more on that. Uh, but what you can see here is um, a, one of, a, on the orange line, the, the results you can get with this uh, AI uh, routing and layout pass. Uh, the y-axis is the number of two qubit gates you get from a circuit, uh, and the x-axis is the number of qubits. Um, and this is for a specific kind of circuit that has a circular um, uh, like ring of C nodes that we will actually work with that in the advanced transpilation session afterwards. Uh, and the blue curve is, uh, is what you could get before with Qiskit, um, with uh, basic Qiskit. So Qiskit does pretty well because of the uh, uh, v uh, VF2 uh, perfect matching of specific circuits that match the coupling map of the, uh, of the graph, but when the circle, doesn't, uh, the circle doesn't have a perfect match within the coupling map, 
um, you get a spike on, uh, on the number of CNOTs used. But, uh, you can see that with this AI pass, we were able to reduce. So this is one of the kinds of, of passes we were able to, to do with AI. Um, we also do synthesis passes that we use for, uh, in the optimization state. Um, and here we were able to apply this method uh, to, to four uh, different uh, kinds of circuits. Okay. Uh, so last year we, we presented synthesis of permutation, linear functions, and Cliffords. So permutation circuits are just circuits made of swaps. Linear functions is what we call circuits only made of C nodes. And Cliffords are Clifford circuits where you have Clifford gates. So there are, uh, so linear functions are a subset of Cliffords and so on. So the, the idea about this kind of passes is that um, you can take a, a, a circuit, for example, made of the gates that, that each of the kinds um, allow, and then you would uh, express it uh, in, in a compact way, like for example, in the Clifford tableau for, this, for a Clifford or something like that. Each of these have a specific representation. And then you would uh, re-implement the circuit, uh, hoping that you can get something um, better than the original circuit. So if you can, you can just replace that block and you will optimize that piece of the circuit. Uh, uh, so the interesting thing about this is that we could uh, re-implement the circuits at the same time as we follow a coupling map. So that means we can apply this optimization without breaking the routing, and we can do it afterwards. Um, so uh, the nice thing we found is that, uh, so you can, you can solve this problem in two ways, right? You can have some super fast heuristics uh, that give you a solution, like they build this circuit, um, but they also, like the chance that you get a better circuit than the original is pretty low because uh, if this is in general also an empty hat problem. Uh, or you can do a hardcore optimization with an optimizer, but that takes like a pretty long time, like in the order of minutes or hours, maybe for, for circuits larger than seven qubits. Right? So what we found is that we could uh, actually uh, find a very good trade-off between time and optimality if we train a reinforcement learning algorithm to do this. So these red dots, uh, so here the, the y-axis is C-node layers and the x-axis is time. Uh, so these red dots you can see here uh, is what you can get with a fast heuristic uh, if you do it in a naive way. Um, so this, this means that yes, you can get, you can synthesize circuits like this pretty fast, but you will get um, pretty high number of C-node layers. Uh, on the other extreme, the purple dots are what you can get with an optimization procedure. So you can get the optimal, the actual optimal circuit, but uh, you can say it takes like 10 to the 5 seconds uh, in the worst case, but uh, at least 10 to the 3 seconds, more or less. Um, and then these three dots, uh, the blue, orange, and uh, green ones, uh, is what we were able to get with reinforcement learning. So you can see that they are not optimal, but they are pretty close. But at the same time, they are also pretty close to the time you can get with the AI. So I'm going to talk about this more in a few minutes, but uh, this time we're bringing a, a new pass, uh, which is able to synthesize Pauli networks. And this is pretty, um, useful in particular in circuits like for chemistry where you have a lot of rotations and stuff like that. Um, and we will have a more in detail example in the next talk. Okay. So, okay, so how, how does this work? So, um, this, imagine you can take, uh, we are trying to do a routing example. The, the, the game here is that you have to take a circuit and decide where to insert uh, a swap in order to make the gate that you have compatible with your coupling map 
in order, okay? So you, you cannot uh, put a gate from the back and, and let it pass through your coupling. So you need to insert swaps in order to make this circuit pass through your coupling map constraint. Um, so imagine we have a magical neural network that takes a representation of this circuit and then basically decides where this swap is. Um, if we repeat this and if this neural network knows what it's doing, uh, eventually we will reach a solution. Right? So we will only just need to follow the instructions from this neural network. Okay, so you will say, yes, but how do we get this? Uh, it turns out it's, it's not hard to do that. Uh, once you have defined this problem, the only thing you need to do is to um, like kind of decide uh, what will your reward function be, like what, will, what you want to uh, prioritize, like how do you score this game, and then you plug it into some reinforcement learning framework and you train. Uh, of course, this is not going to work in general, but it turns out that it works for a lot of cases. Uh, this is an example of a training process of one of the algorithms we, we have. Um, in the x-axis is the number of steps, like the progress of the training, and in the y-axis, uh, for the different graphs, we have different metrics we track through the training. Um, one of the nice things we did was that uh, for this network to be able to learn this, um, we kind of start with pretty easy examples uh, that you can basically do by hand, and then we gradually increase the difficulty um, so that the, that the network kind of learns incrementally. And this is what you can say the, in this first graph, like the difficulty. Uh, and on the other side, and the second graph, we, at the same time, we track the success rate of this network, because of course you can see that this process can fail if the network doesn't know what it's doing. So the nice thing we saw is that uh, at some point through the training, there is a moment where uh, this success rate goes to 100% and kind of the network learns how to do this, right? In general. It might be better or worse. Uh, you can see uh, the C not count and depth on the bottom, uh, which it also reached a peak, uh, and then the network starts kind of optimizing from there, and you can see that it, it keeps getting better by reducing the number of C not it produces. Okay, so this is more or less how it works. Uh, as I said, you can ask me a bit more uh, in the break, or you can take a look at the paper if you are more interested in the how we train this. Uh, but now I'm going to go into how you can actually use this, okay? So typically, uh, this is a very uh, uh, like limited uh, transpilation pipeline. Uh, we will see more how you can integrate it into the full pass manager uh, in Kiskit in the second talk, but this is more or less a minimal uh, example of how you can use these passes. So you would take a circuit, uh, you will start by routing this circuit. Uh, this routing actually does layout as well, so it will take your circuit, uh, apply the AI model to insert swaps and choose the qubits you want to use, then we would collect uh, specific blocks from this circuit uh, that we will later resynthesize with the AI algorithm. And finally, we will uh, do this synthesis. In this case, we are doing G4 block synthesis. So by the way, this, some of these passes run uh, on the cloud. So you, you can have a pipeline which uh, mixes some uh, remote passes like the routing uh, with some local passes, like the collection of the Clifford blocks, and again, some remote pass here. Uh, we are uh, releasing a local version, but let me go uh, a bit further first before we talk about that. So how will a pipeline like this look like on a circuit? Um, so on the first uh, row, we have a circuit that is uh, it's known to not be a very good implementation of this, okay? There is too many C nodes, but I'm going to use it as an example. Um, so the first thing we do is to do some AI routing on top of this. Uh, you can see I'm routing this to a, 
linear connectivity, so you cannot put C nodes between anything that is not nearest neighbor. Uh, so you can already see that there is a lot of C nodes that don't follow that. Uh, so the AI routing insert swaps to, to uh, solve that problem. In the next stage, we collect these Clifford blocks. So anything that is a Clifford uh, gets blocked into a piece. And then we uh, resynthesize each of these blocks. Uh, so the nice thing about this is that, in particular, this, this final step, um, we wouldn't be able to do it uh, with an optimizer. I mean, we would be able to, but this would take hours, probably. Um, and it wouldn't be useful to do it with a heuristic in general because we wouldn't get any optimization out of it, probably, uh, because the circuits we can resynthesize for each block wouldn't be better than the original. So this is one of the nice optimization features that we can do with this. Okay, so uh, after all this, um, this is uh, like, what is new with, with this uh, uh, transpiler service uh, this year? Uh, so we, we bring three big updates. The first one is that we have uh, tested and improved the performance, the, like the speed, basically, of, of how this runs. Um, and we tested on the bench press uh, benchmark that uh, Matthew just uh, described. Uh, and we saw that we were able to actually run uh, these on pretty large circuits and with nice results. The second thing is that uh, this new uh, Pauli network pass that we think it will be really useful for optimizing uh, chemistry circuits. And the third one is that uh, we are releasing uh, a local version of this, of these AI passes, so that you can actually just run it on your laptop. Uh, I will go into more details on this, but you don't even need GPUs or anything to run this. Uh, these are pretty small models, so you can give it a try. So, okay, let me go through uh, each of these uh, updates. Um, the first one is this performance. I think you, you probably saw this from uh, the, the State of the Union uh, yesterday. Um, we ran this uh, AI uh, passes, so the full Qiskit transpiler with the AI passes inserted. Um, and we found that uh, we were able to improve uh, the, the basic Qiskit transpiler, um, in, in particular for large circuits. So what you see here is the, the number of qubits of each of the, like we kind of block, uh, made some blocks of sizes of circuits. Um, and what, what you can see in the y-axis is the, num the, the two qubit depth, in this case, of the circuits relative to what you can get with the Qiskit uh, transpiler. Um, and we saw that we were able to get uh, pretty big improvements in depth, uh, in particular for larger circuits. So we think this is probably because uh, there is also more room for optimization for those larger circuits. Um, of course, this, this is the average. There is cases where you can get better optimization with other things, and we will discuss this, uh, of course, in the next talk. But uh, this is a pretty solid option uh, if you want to try to optimize a circuit. So the th second thing is this uh, Pauli network uh, synthesis pass. So this is basically doing uh, the same as the other synthesis pass we said, uh, we, uh, we mentioned before. Uh, but uh, it allows you to optimize uh, kind of generic circuits that include a Clifford and a set of rotations. So this allows you to do peephole optimization of uh, chunks of circuit. Um, we currently uh, were able to do uh, efficient synthesis for up to six qubit blocks. Um, this, uh, this also uh, includes uh, like it, so it, it replicates the whole operation. Uh, so you can use it in the same way as you use the Clifford uh, synthesis. And it even allows you to have parametric rotation. So you don't even need to have uh, specific rotations uh, specified. So we have seen that this can improve uh, certain circuits uh, up to 50% into qubit gates. Um, 
So we haven't benchmarked it extensively yet. You can try to play with it, and but we think it could be pretty useful in certain cases. And finally, uh, we are releasing uh, a version of these uh, local passes, uh, these AI passes uh, for you to run locally on your laptop. Uh, so these, these AI models are pretty small, uh, on the order of kilobytes to a few megabytes, and this can be run pretty efficiently on your laptops. Um, we spend a, a quite part of this year optimizing uh, this and building a, a Rust reinforcement learning framework where you can run these uh, passes in local. Uh, you can actually uh, install this local mode like this uh, and try it. We just released it yesterday. Uh, and not just that, uh, we are planning to also release this reinforcement learning framework where you can actually train your own passes. Uh, this is not out yet, but uh, stay tuned for this. Um, and hopefully you can play with your own passes. <laughs>